Welcome to our Reality Sports Message Time. We're going to get into it today. We're going to be talking about a little bit of an introduction into blessing opponents. A little bit of an introduction to blessing opponents. So, it's interesting to say because the world tends to tell us certain ways we ought to treat our opponents in sport. Um, typically, the world might tell us that we should embarrass them, that, that they are enemies, that they ought to be destroyed, demolished, embarrassed. The world has a lot of different ways to, to, to teach us about how we ought to treat our opponents. Well, we're going to see today that God's way of how we ought to treat our opponents is actually quite different from the way the world says we should treat them. And so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at God's word and see what it has to say about how we ought to treat our opponents. To do that, though, we need to start off by looking at how God views us, how God sees us as human beings. So to do that, we're going to talk through Romans 5, verses 6 through 11. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. If you have a Reality Sports Bible, you can find that on page 914. Romans 5. <clears throat> so we see here that Paul, who's a follower of Jesus, is he's writing a letter to these Christians in this city, you might have heard of it, called Rome. And so that's why the book is called Romans, because Paul's writing a letter to these Romans. And so we're going to see what Paul has to say to him. Starting in verse 6, he says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, you see, at the very beginning of everything, when God had first made humanity, first made human beings, Everything was, was right. Everything was the way it was supposed to be. Everything was all well and good. Everybody was on the same team, really. There, there was no opponents. Everything was the way it was supposed to be. Life was good. But the humans, they decided that they wanted to rebel and turn their backs against God and, and do what's called sin. They wanted to sin against God. And essentially what sin does is sin makes it so that someone who, who was... A teammate who's on the same team as God, it turns, sin is basically choosing to be God's enemy. It's rebelling and turning against him and choosing to be God's enemy. And so God's only response, because God is perfect, to encountering his enemies is ultimately to destroy them for all eternity. Is destruction. And so these humans who had just sinned, that's where they stood. They stood in light of God being rebels, deserving destruction, and there was nothing that they could do about it. But God still loved his creation very much, and so that's why he promised them, hey, I'm going to send to you a savior. I'm going to send to you someone who's going to make all of this right. In fact, that's what most of this Bible is about. Most of it is about God's people patiently waiting for that Savior, for that person to come. But God was waiting for just the right time. God was waiting for the perfect time in the world to send that Savior. That's why it says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, that is, humans are powerless to do anything, to save themselves, it says that Christ died for the ungodly. In other words, that Savior came 2,000 years ago as a man named Jesus of Nazareth, and he lived a perfect life. He never sinned against God. He never rebelled. Him and God were always on the same team. And Jesus sacrificed himself on a, on a cross. Because he lived a perfect life, he, he died on a Roman cross. It says, for the ungodly. In other words, for you and me. Anyone who is an enemy with God is ungodly, not godly. So Jesus died for you and me. He gave himself up for the people that were enemies with God. Let's keep reading. Let's see what it says. It says, Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. 
while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, while we were still sinning, Jesus died for us. And what this does for us as human beings is it offers us restoration and reconciliation. And, and what that means is we are forgiven of our sin. We are restored to what we once were. And then it brings reconciliation. That means we are, we are brought back onto God's team. We are, we are brought back into fellowship, communion with God. And this is only available to anybody who places their faith in Jesus, who believes that his sacrifice on the cross was, was for him. Because that's, that's why he came. And so if, you, if for anyone that places their faith in Jesus, gets restoration and reconciliation. Now that our faith is actually in Jesus, we get what's called made justified in other words we are made right the things are made back to way they were originally supposed to be at the beginning of, of creation our sin is placed on jesus and then jesus's righteousness is then placed on us so god sees us the same way he sees jesus the, that's the deal it's kind of like the great exchange there let's keep reading it says since we have now been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? In other words, what this is saying is no longer is God going to crush us and destroy us for being his enemies as, as sinners, but we're actually welcomed as sons and daughters. That This is all bought by the blood of Jesus, and we are welcomed into the family on God's team. This is all brought about because of what Jesus has done for us. So it says, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? In other words, before Jesus, all of us, every single human that's ever lived, was enemies with God. And deserving to be, to be destroyed, to be crushed for all eternity. But because of Jesus... We are now brought back onto the same team, God, by faith. And once we do this, once we place our faith in Jesus, we, we are given a, a brand new heart that actually wants to be on God's team, that wants to serve him with everything that we have. And this new heart that we've been given, this, 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 stone of, uh, this heart of stone that's been changed out for a heart of flesh, it helps us to view other people in, in a similar way to how God views them. In other words, when we're talking about opponents, we don't view our opponents as obstacles to overcome, but we can view our opponents as people to strive with. People to strive with. That's what the word competition actually means. It means to strive with. To grow better with. And, and so... Because of that, because we, we value our opponent, and we can, we can love them now, and we can show them that we value them, there's a number of things that we can do to show that we care for our opponents. We can, we can try our best in a match. We can, we can give it our best effort no matter what. But at the same time, we can do so in a way that doesn't embarrass them. We can do so in a way that helps them to get better, just the same as they're doing for us. We can wrestle in such a way that these two groups of people, us and our opponents, are both making each other better, striving with each other. We can shake our opponent's hand and, and actually mean it. We can be thankful for them because I'll tell you guys what, without an opponent, we can't wrestle. There's actually no competition if no opponent shows up for us. And so we don't get to we don't get to participate in the sport that we love if there's no opponents. 
so we're really we can be really thankful for them we can shake their hand and and we can tell them hey good job good work we can be really grateful for our opponent in that way You see, this completely changes the way that we ought to view other people. The world tends to say opponents are people that should be our enemies, that we should embarrass them, destroy them, do whatever we can. But because of what God has done for us, and because of how that changes our hearts, that ought to change the way we view other people too. It's no longer destroy, embarrass, but cherish love and strive with that's what that's what jesus did for us we were we were opponents of god we were enemies with god and jesus he died for us he wanted the best for us and so that's my prayer for all of you as well let's 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 view our opponents in a way that god views them as people that need Jesus. And it's actually when we live our lives valuing our opponents, that's upside down. That's different. That 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 that's living in such a way that other people want to ask about who, who who is this Jesus guy that makes you want to treat your opponents like this. That's upside down. When we when we live our lives in such a way that we value our opponents so much that it's gonna it's gonna turn the world upside down that we live in. It's going gonna, it's gonna to communicate to other people that there's another king. Jesus. It's not sport. Sport's not king. The president of the United States is not king. Jesus is king. And when we live our lives this way, that's what it's going to communicate to these people. To everybody. So, we're going to continue to talk about blessing opponents this week. We're going to get into it deep. And we're going to do it in several passages. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll be ready to roll. Lord, thank you. You're so good to us. And there's nothing we can do to, to earn it. God, we were your enemies, and you made us on your team again. Help us to live our lives valuing, cherishing, respecting our opponents, God, because without them, we, we couldn't wrestle. We couldn't be getting better. God, help us to do that. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last thing, verse 11. It's at the end of the day, we can celebrate. Because here's what God's word says. It's not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Through Jesus, we are reconciled to God, and that communicates how we treat other people. Thanks. Have a blessed day.